am I. Good morning. I'm Judith Lay, welcoming you to Praise, the programme that connects faith and daily life. Man's Radio. On the programme this morning, Lieutenant Dylan Nevote tells us why the Salvation Army are looking forward to being in town this Thursday evening. We've got extracts from the Tinwald Carol service recorded last Thursday, and we finish with a look at Christmas parties. But let's start with music, a great hymn that speaks of waiting and watching. People look east, the time is near. The St. Michael Singers and People Look East. And if you've got a million and one things to do before the big day itself, you won't need me to remind you that we're over halfway through Advent. The weeks of December when the Church asks us to prepare for the great feast of Christmas in a way that doesn't involve money or any material things. Advent is the Latin word for coming, and there are three meanings of coming that Christians are thinking about just now. The first happened about 2,000 years ago when Jesus came into the world as a baby, lived as a man and died in order to open up to us the way to an everlasting life. Christians believe that there will be another coming one day when Jesus returns not as a baby but as a king with a kingdom that has no end. But there's yet another coming and it's happening right now. In all the noise and busyness that surrounds Christmas, Jesus wants to come quietly into our lives with gifts that are free and last forever. Gifts of love, joy, peace and hope. And they come like a candle's flame, small and silent, but steadily driving out the darkness and showing us something wonderful. But with all that pressure to celebrate Christmas by buying and doing, it's easy to overlook the huge importance of that first coming the birth of Jesus in poverty in a stable in Bethlehem. That's why Reverend Alex Brown, our pioneer minister working in Douglas, was so pleased when Oliver Cheshire from Douglas Town Centre Management asked him if he could stage an outdoor presentation of the Nativity right here in the town centre on the last late-night shopping evening of this year. Maybe you heard Alex and Oliver talking about it on this programme last week. It's this Thursday the 19th in Villiers Square on the corner of Regent Street and the Promenade and the nativity story will be told through narration, dance, drama and music. There'll be live animals just as there would have been at the birth of Jesus and a chance for everyone to share in the story by singing some favourite Christmas carols. There are two performances, each lasting about 40 minutes. The first is at 6pm and then it's repeated at half past seven. It's all completely free, but in order to keep everyone safe, you must have a ticket. They're very easy to download. Just go to pioneerdouglas.im. That's all lowercase, no spaces. Pioneer Douglas. 
Someone else who's very enthusiastic about Christmas Live is Lieutenant Dylan Nevoat. Dylan and his wife, Lieutenant Rachel, are the officers in charge of the Salvation Army on the island, based in the old Fairfield School buildings here in central Douglas. And they have a big part to play in Thursday's outdoor nativity, as Dylan now explains. The nativity story, it's the reason for the season. And although we can enjoy shopping and the retail and all the commercial side to Christmas, to the Christmas season, um, it's coming back to the, the main focus of Christmas. And I love the simplicity of a nativity involving the children. I love the idea of involving real animals. And I think uh, that townspeople will get really excited to see that happen this year. I'm excited to see that happen. And it's just bringing the story to life because that's what uh, the nativity is all about. It's telling the story of uh, a gift from heaven to all the humanity. I'm just really excited to see what's going to happen. I think we're going to make a bit of history. You know, it's something to remember and to be proud of and uh, just really excited to, to experience the atmosphere of this event. And we actually invited uh, Alex to come and join us as a church to explore what the mission of God could look like in our community and the wider community. And um, when Alex came, came to us with this idea, we thought, great, we can get the Salvation Army involved, particularly with the music. Uh, we have our brass band, we have our songsters, the choir, and uh, we have these gifts that we can use. And we really feel strongly about partnering, not just expressing the Christmas story ourselves, but sharing that story in partnership with other churches, uh, with other charities and uh, the community groups. And that's the real heart of Christmas is coming together as one big family and, and celebrating together. Dylan, just digressing slightly for a moment, you, of course, have moved out of the Citadel because you have great plans for a new centre for the Salvation Army. Do you think that's pushed you even more out into the community? Absolutely. Um, it's really been exciting. It's moved us out of our spiritual home, which has had been at the Citadel at Lord Street for a very long time. We've decanted to Fairfield School, but it's given us an opportunity to reimagine what can, it, what can the work of God look like? What can the community work look like? And it's excited our people because we've been on this journey. And as Alex was sharing, there's been these moments where you think, that's it. And we just need to be ready and grab hold of those opportunities. Our church folk are really excited to, uh, to get involved, to participate. Yes, it's challenging us that we don't just continue with the status quo and doing things as we normally do things. But imagine, how can we broaden our horizons and get creative? But at the same time, you are providing your traditional Christmas meal, aren't you? And, of course, the huge support that you give to the community through Christmas parcels. You're still doing all of that. The core of the Salvation Army work is still there, isn't it? Yeah, uh, Christmas season is a very important season for us. And uh, we're serving the community on Boxing Day. We're providing a, a lunch. I think last year we had over 70 people from the community come and share with us in a lunch. And uh, we're going to share in fellowship together and enjoy that time together on Boxing Day. We're uh, helping out with our toy appeal as usual. And at the minute we have about 370 children that we're helping out uh, through the social care agencies. And uh, we're providing food vouchers to around 350 family units, going into the hospital, meeting all the prisoners, just sharing the Christmas uh, message.
That's Heather Innes and Jacinth Hamill, inspired by the Lindisfarne liturgy and Come, O Wisdom of God. And before that, I was talking to Lieutenant Dylan Nevoat of the Salvation Army, just one of the many churches of different denominations all working together for the outdoor retelling of the real story of Christmas this Thursday here in the centre of Douglas. You'll find links to Christmas Live and the ticket website all over social media or go straight to pioneerdouglas.im to download as many free tickets as you need. If you don't have internet access, pop into Oliver Cheshire's office at 13 Church Street by Shawsbrow Car Park entrance here in Douglas. Another Christmas tradition that's firmly established on the December calendar is the Tinwald Carol Service, organised by the Chief Minister's office and involving the many musicians who work in various government departments. But the service itself is open to everyone to attend. This year it was held in St Mary's Roman Catholic Church in the presence of His Excellency the Lieutenant Governor and the Lord Bishop and it was led by the Archdeacon, the Venerable Andrew Brown, who is also Chaplain of the House of Keys. We were there to record it and I bring you some extracts from the service for you to enjoy now. Deputy Clerk to Tinwald, Jonathan King, was, as usual, the very able musical director, conducting the Tinwald Choir and the brass ensemble of Peter Smith, Brian Osborne, Chris Weeks, Martin Norbury and Andrew Radcliffe, who gave a stirring accompaniment to the congregation carol singing. The government staff choir, directed by Mandy Griffin, was another welcome addition to the service. In a few moments, you'll hear both choirs and the brass ensemble all together with a wonderful version of Gaudete and Bible readings by Kate Lord Brennan, MLC, and MHK's Rob Callister and Ray Harmer. And chaplain to the keys, the Venerable Andrew Brown, has a word in season. But we begin with the Tinwald Choir, directed by Jonathan King, and Shine, Star, Shine, with music by Frank Woolley and words by Brescia Madrill. Shines 
St. Luke tells of the birth of Jesus. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to the city of David called Bethlehem, because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged, and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son, and wrapped him in the bands of cloth, and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the inn. In that region there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Saviour who is a Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you, and you will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and laying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth peace among those who he favours. When the angels had left and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place. Watch the Lord, what the Lord has now known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary, Joseph and a child lying in a manger. St. John unfolds a great mystery of the Incarnation. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, and darkness has not overcome it. There was a man sent from God, whose name was John. 
He came for testimony, to bear witness to the light, that all might believe through him. He was not the light, but came to bear witness to the light. The true light that enlightens every man was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made through him, yet the world knew him not. He came to his own home, and his own people received him not. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us, full of grace and truth, and we have beheld his glory, glory as of the only Son from the Father. Thanks be to God. Speak to me, Lord, and speak through me, and build up your people gathered here today. For Christ's sake. Amen. Incarnation. Let me tell you, as a lad from a Lancashire working class family, incarnation is, is how honest people eat their tinned fruit on a Sunday afternoon. <laughs> incarnation milk. The word became flesh, wrote John in the prologue of his gospel, and dwelt among us, full of grace and truth. That's, of course, what the word incarnation really means, that God took on frail human flesh. The ultimate mystery becomes a frail and helpless human baby. God among us means, quite simply, that God has walked the earth. We are on holy ground not because we're in a beautiful church, but because we're on a beautiful planet. Moses at the burning bush was told to take off his shoes because the ground on which he stood was holy ground. And incarnation means simply that, all ground is holy ground, because God not only made it, but walked on it, ate and slept, and worked and died on it. This planet matters. This beautiful but broken world has ultimate significance and cannot be ignored or abused with impunity. We use it as a mere commodity or worse still, as a dumping ground at our own spiritual human Peril, because it is sacred. We are all charged to take every little bit of this planet with an ultimate seriousness, because God takes every atom of it with an ultimate seriousness. Secondly, incarnation means that we matter, you matter. Human beings matter. God became flesh. John wrote a little later in his Gospel that God so loved the world that he gave his only Son. The God who is beyond our comprehension and yet as close to us as our next breath. This God came among us to seek us out in love to transform our humanity. And if I may use the words of an advertisement for cosmetics at this point, God did all this because you're worth it. <laughs> you are worth it. God became flesh means you are worth it. Every single human being is worth it because every single human being is sacred and wonderful and beautiful and amazing. From the richest to the poorest, from the outcast and the refugee, to the lawmakers and the rulers, we are levelled by the incarnation. But we are not levelled down. Friends, we are levelled up. We are lifted up. Raised to the level of a sacred humanity a cherished humanity. 
and it means that God loves us. A love that cost everything and includes everyone. A love that challenges us, that calls us to be our best selves, not just at Christmas, but for every moment of every life. The Brass Ensemble draws this year's Tinwald Carol service to a close and my thanks to all involved for their help in making our recording last Thursday. Now, where do you stand when it comes to Christmas parties? Love them or loathe them? As these folk shared their views, it certainly got me thinking. I was actually a very shy child. I used to almost get sick at the thought of going to a children's party of any kind, but particularly Christmas parties. But the one thing that induced me to go was those were the occasions when I could wear my sparkly shoes. I think every little girl that grew up in the late 50s, early 60s had identical silvery sparkly shoes and they were so beautiful that it made me get over my nervousness about actually going to parties. I think really Christmas parties and New Year's parties particularly have been somewhat spoiled for me by the fact that when I was 11, it was during a New Year's Eve party that my parents split up. That was when my dad told my mum he was leaving her. So anytime there's merriment at Christmas and large gatherings of people, I, I wonder whether that sparks some strange child of divorce memory. I think for a lot of my life I have been the person that seems to be organising things and when I think of Christmas parties it's the ones that I used to organise for Sunday schools when I was involved with that where you had to think about who was doing the food, where the presents were coming from, making sure the games were all going to work. Um, do you know that 12 wrappings is about the ideal for pass the parcel if you want it to last just the right length before kids start getting really fed up and bored um, make it 12. The Christmas party has a long history in 1652 a book entitled The Vindication of Christmas makes note of old English Christmas traditions including card playing, dances with ploughboys and maidservants and carol singing nothing changes really this Christmas, we pray for all partygoers. May they be safe, and may they find real joy amongst the sometimes disappointing revelry. And that's all that we have time for today. Praise is available as a podcast each week at manxradio.com and that's also where you'll find the Praise blog, the latest notice board with lots of information about Advent and Christmas services, concerts and special events. So, till we meet again, this is Judith saying thank you for your company and I wish you and those you love every blessing in the days ahead. Station Manx Red